How you doing everybody? It's midnight here in Tokyo and we're about to get ready for another midnight snack run. That's right, I'm doing a, a great outdoor indoor camping. There's the tent. Uh, can I hurt her back so she can't join us in this uh, because uh, she wants to sleep in a really comfortable bed. But that's all right. Sorry but starting late, I was attacked by a bunch of hornets. You know the kind. The murder kind. Shall we? Hope everyone's doing okay. Hold on a second. That's better. So. Let's see what old Frosty has for midnight snack. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. I was craving ramen and I was craving curry, but they seem to have put this all in one. What? This is magical. Japanese curry cheese ramen, or cup noodle cheese curry, whichever way you, you like it. Uh, it is a beef flavored one, and no, you do not put instant ramen in the refrigerator. I did that for impact to show off uh, good old Frosty. All right, this should be a lot of fun. Now, the great thing the great thing about uh, cup noodles is that you can't really, you can't really mess this up. You can't really mess up cup noodles like I did the other day. If anyone had watched the live stream from a few days ago, I tried to make instant ramen. Sorry, yeah, it didn't go well. The internet got really angry at me. Just try to keep it down, okay? Because can I sleep in the other room? It's, like, it, it's midnight. Hey there, Jeff Kennedy. Oh, genki desu All right, somebody said don't remove the whole lid. Whoa, hold on, I got some light in here. There we go. That looks pretty cool. I can go 400 lumens. There we go, 400 lumens. All right, I can smell curry. And look at all that good stuff in there. There's some carrots. I guess that's chunks of cheese, what? Hold on a second, let me pull this out here. That's a chunk of cheese. Oh, this is gonna be really awesome. Oh, what else is in there? I thought it was potatoes for a second. Okay, we're gonna be putting some hot water in here. You can hear the wildlife. You can hear the wildlife in the room next door. It's a campfire. I've been using the same campfire for the last couple of days. Um, I do have, oh. Um, so Kanai and I are going to be making these in another live stream, maybe in, in next week. These are um, a different kind of ramen. These are a little bit higher. Let's say the next level up from instant ramen. So I'm looking forward to this. These are Kyushu ramens. There you go. Miyazaki and Oita. Looking forward to that. All right. Now, last time I did the indoor camping, um, it, it's been a long time, a few weeks. And I thought that we this... Um, a state of emergency for Japan would 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 end a lot sooner than it did, but it went on until the middle of May, and then uh, the prime minister extended Tokyo and uh, five other prefectures. Yeah, so then we we are out of the state of emergency. However, I noticed that people get angry if you travel outside of the prefecture or state, so you have to stay in your own state. So I still can't go camping like in the in the wild. However. Tokyo is has some wild parts, but we should still stay in one area. Hey, Lisa Oh, how you doing? Let's get this done here. Cheese ramen, this is pretty epic. Okay. Okay, zoom in in here. Four hundred lumens in here. Let's get this going. Here. I guess I fill it to the line. It's like alive. 
What? Some kind of creature in there. I'm supposed to close this up. And the rumor is, oh, come on. You have to let it sit for three minutes. Sit for three minutes now. All right. I gotta. Anyone have a watch? Let me know when it's been three minutes. Okay. All right. Right here. Um. I, for dessert, I have these uh, cherry blossom Oreos. I thought we would try one of these as well for dessert. And I have some other snacks here. This one looks pretty good. Is it? It's um a Sakura chiffon cake Oreos. So we have dessert uh, as well. We gotta wait for three minutes. Let's go back over to the tent to camp spot. Thank you, Frosty, for keeping my instant ramen, instant ramen, uh, cool. No, you do. I, once again, you do not have to put instant ramen in the refrigerator. I did that because I'm a geek, and I do things that make no sense whatsoever. By the way, our our camp spot, my indoor camp spot, was on NHK World a few days ago. I don't know if you guys saw that. It was on uh, uh, Tokyo Eye. I've been reporting on Tokyo Eye since 2008. I've done like 50 reports for them. So it's always an honor when they, they invite me back. And I, I promised Chris that I would shave shave his quarantine head. He's, he's got some long hair, um, but I, I will do it. Kanai is gonna be giving my, uh, uh, my hair a trim next week. Cause I, I think it's getting like um, back to the future looking. I can't control this anymore. I find myself stroking my hair which is very creepy. Kind of thinks it makes me look like an evil warlord. Uh, Lisa O writes in here, thanks for all the fun during quarantine. Here is something for your first road trip. Seaside, mountain, farmland. Mmm. Now, technically, Kanai and I, we did rent a car, um, which we shouldn't have, and we, we drove around Mount Fuji um, and came back. But uh, probably, I think we're gonna go to the mountains. I think it's time for the mountains. Yeah, the sea is too crowded. Everyone's going to the beach. I've seen the the pictures online. Thank you for that, Lisa. Uh, Bull Runner zero zero one. Wife and I love your streams. Can't wait for you to be able to go out more and explore and get more food. I know. Um, I'm gonna be um, in June. I'm gonna be doing a lot more streams outside of Tokyo once they open it up. Um, I'm also gonna be doing maybe a little bit less live streaming and more um, edited videos as the new channel. Um, is finally released. Um, the animated opening is just about done. The, the uh, animator wrote me a message a couple of days ago and he said he needed one more day of work, which whenever he has time. So I, I'm guessing next week will be the week where we can we can release the new channel, which I'm so excited about. But I'm gonna be traveling um, by, by rent-a-car. So that means it's, it's safer than taking public transportation, which means that um, I'll be able to get back and back into the groove and, and start making travel videos again. Uh, finding stories from all around Japan. I'm super excited about that. Bull Runner, um, big thanks to, to you and uh, your wife. Really, really appreciate it. Queen of Tacos is here. Queen of Tacos. John, don't get too close to that fire. Too late. Nice and warm. Nice and warm. Yeah. The mosquitoes are bad. Sometimes you gotta wear long shirts even indoors. Uh, you, you, anyone ever had that one mosquito who gets in? and you, you turn off the lights, you go to sleep, and he just keeps buzzing in your air. And then finally at two in the morning, you wake up, you get like a magazine and you just go hunting, right? Some people will move to another room, then there are the others that go hunting. They will hunt that mosquito down. Then you get the mosquito, you go back to bed and you realize there were two of them in there. It happens all the time, all the time. Okay, three minutes. All right, thanks guys. Yeah, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. See what you guys, see what happens? I, I can get completely, completely, um... Ooh! Look at that cheesy goodness! What? Okay, 400 lumens. All right, there you go. Look at that cheesy goodness. Whoa! This is incredible! Look at that! Just look at that! That looks like meat! Is that meat? That's meat! This is, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. All right, okay, let's get this. Okay, let's take this here. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, 
I've got, I, I have my um, table set up here. Wow. This is amazing. I've never seen cheesy ramen like this. Hold on a second. I want to, uh, I gotta stir this up here. Whoa, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh my word. Oh, mama, look at this. It's all like processed stuff. It can't be healthy for you, but who cares? It's midnight. Oh wow, I don't even see the broth. It's all curry. Oh, there it is down there. It's all like curry, like a curry broth. Oh, this is, I'm so excited. I mixed in the, the cheese with all this. Get, get, get off my chopstick, you. Ah, it's all stuck by cheese. Guess, guess he wants to stay there. I've been fighting. I've been fighting uh, today with a, with a gachapon capsule in Akihabara. It was the most frustrating, um, frustrating experience. I kept, I, 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 I really like manhandled that capsule and finally I got it off. All right, um, Mr. Das, if, if Mr. Das is here, all right, I got you covered, buddy. This is, uh, Mr. Das is always given super chats and he says, no, no matter what he says, and he's very, Mr. Das is a very, very intelligent man. I'm guessing he's a man, I call him Mr. Das. And uh, he has a way of incorporating somewhere in his super chat, super dry. This is for you. It's, it's the official uh, sponsor of the 2020 plus one Olympics. And that plus one is for safety. Ooh, come by everybody. Je suis content, as Jennifer would say. All right, let's get this centered here. Now let's try this. This is um, cheese curry ramen. It's a Japanese curry cheese ramen. Oh, mama. Here we go. Je suis content. Muy content. That's like Spanish and très content. It's a piece of beef. That's not bad. I think I could have put a little bit more water in there. This is the best cup noodle I've ever had in my entire life. And I've had some good ones. The Thai, the Thai ones are really good. This is the best. This is so delicious. This is a meal in a cup. This is base, This is more than a ramen. This is a meal in a cup. Oh my. Oh my. This costs a dollar fifty as well, which is a steal, right? If you get them on sale, sometimes they'll be a little bit more. I'm gonna put one of these in all of the Daimyo packages of the Patreon supporters. So one one is inbound, all right? Mm. And look, that cheese won't still there. Little guys hanging on. You can close your eyes and hear nature. Okapi. It's hanging out. It's hanging out. So while, while I'm uh, um, ingesting this or digesting this, I will take some of your questions. Uh, Rewa Maji. 
or Maggie, or Meiji, Meiji. Speaking of gotcha, I saw you pass through one of uh, gotchas today, and what I I would had drained my yen on until I got what I wanted. Enjoy the curry ramen. It's kind of blocked by the lens there, but uh, yeah, that's Gacha Kaikon is one of my favorite places. The owner there, he's a small business owner. He's he's been running that since I guess like the 1980s. It's like part of. Ooh, Asahi. It's like what part of the the culture, the history of Akihabara, that, that place. And the ones in front of the electronic shops out on the street, that's really convenient. Um, the the thing is the Gachapon market has been growing. More people are using Gachapon. So his business, you would think that it would be shrinking because everybody has a Gachapon machine. But now, because it's so popular, uh, people are going to his place to look for the rare ones, right? So there's a lot of things. That was a lot of fun today's live stream. Danny's here. Your French is pretty good. Bon appétit. Again. Très bien. Merci. Mm. Hands down, best ramen ever. In a cup. In a cup. All right. I Gotta be careful with my words. A Northwind Lab, thank you. Northwind Lab is, is drooling, I think, in India there. I like I like it when I have that effect here. Marty's also drooling. <laughs> I like that I like that uh, uh, emoji. Uh, we got Michael Nielsen from, from Denmark in there. Um, Irvon writes in, how about an Enoshima walkthrough? That is a great idea. Um, Enoshima is down in Kanagawa. It's kind of an island. It's an island, but with a bridge, a long bridge to get to it. Um, it's a pretty unique looking place, and I've already been to the Enoshima Spa. So we'll see if I can I, I can go more thoroughly, go inside of there, maybe get a, on a motorcycle or on a bicycle and ride around that island. Uh, it's not too big. It's a great, it's a great suggestion. Um, really good views all the way over to Mount Fuji from Enoshima as well. Um, do, do, oh, oh! Do you remember today at the vending machine where I showed you in Akihabara, there was a vending machine and it had the wave, the the wave, and then on the Japanese wave, there's like waves coming out of the wave. Do you know that? That's from Enoshima, taken of Mount Fuji in the distance. That's that view that you get. So if you get there where the waves are, are animated, um, you'll be able to see uh, that same image with Mount Fuji in the background. It's pretty cool. I actually have a, a live stream there where I was sitting in a in an onsen with Mount Fuji in the background. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. Good suggestion. Very good suggestion. Yeah. Danny does write in here. It does look weird. It does. It's true. Yeah. Ah. So, um, May has... May has officially ended. It's now June in in Japan. We're a day ahead of the United States and most of the world, except for maybe Australia and New Zealand. Um, they get there earlier. But uh, we are now in June 1st, and I have to tell you, the last 60 days, uh, the Kanai and I were, were mostly inside. Uh, at the end, we kind of went out, but it's been really, really tough going. And I, I think all of you feel the same way, and I know that some of you are still in, in lockdown, um, or states of emergencies, and um, I just want to say, whatever you can do to stay mentally mentally um, well, please remember that that is that is very very important. Uh, we didn't get a lot of sunlight, so we started to take vitamin D pills, uh, uh, vitamin D three pills, at the suggestion of viewers. So I got to say thank you to a lot of you that are, that are looking out uh, for us. Um, I want to get to uh, see if we can get to to five hundred likes. And I will crack open the, those um, those cherry blossom Oreos. Oh man! Even the chopsticks are delicious. Hold on, four hundred lumens. There you go, four hundred and fifty actually. And there's some curry. See, there's some curry soup there. Why don't I try that next? I'm gonna try the curry soup. All right. Uh, is the noodles GMO free? Mm, 
No, maybe, no. It's 100% um, something. No. I don't know. Is there anything good with GMO stuff? I always think, we always look at the negatives. Maybe there's some positives with GMO. Is there any? All right, I'm gonna try the soup. Try the soup. This is so good. It's 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 really salty, so I'm, I might not eat it all. Um, it's it's hard to get rid of the salt taste. Remember, I, it is midnight, and I'll be going to bed soon. Mmm. Beef. How many salt? Sodium. Uh, 5.1 grams. That's a lot. All right, I'm just gonna put this away. Hold on. I'll put it away. It's a lot of salt. GMO isn't all that bad. It's a great way to produce crops in needed areas, right? It's in Kyle. I try not to eat GMO, but if it's if it's the only thing, I will eat it. Let's just say that, okay? If it's, I, I don't worry too, too much about it. It's hard to, there's, there's 8 billion people on the world, on earth. You can't be, you can't be too picky about what sometimes is in the food, I guess. But, um, I think, oh, ice. I think if, um, if you're in your twenties, then maybe it's a little bit different. I'm, I'm in my mid forties and I'm more like GMO. All right. It's kind of that. But if you're in your, your 20s, you're like, GMO? Yeah. 20s are probably... I, I was talking with somebody um, about um, wearable tech and the next level. And uh, there seems to be a, a generation gap. Anyone who's about... And you guys can maybe confirm or deny this. This is a big deal in Japan. After about age 30, you're in the older generation. Meaning, would you, if you could enhance your intelligence and memory and they could put a memory chip inside of here, like an SD card, to enhance your memory, like in the Matrix, where you could learn like Judo and stuff, would you install memory chips into your mind and be able to do all this stuff? There's a certain age, like the younger generation would be like, yeah, let's do it, man. And then there's another age where it's like, what? No, I like the way I am. You know what I mean? Nope. The Dutch guy's like, nope. Ain't no chip, wait, what was it? Ain't no chip big enough. <laughs> We're talking one of those flash memory cards. Uh, or ENIAC, what was the name of the first computer? ENIAC, I think it was. Shove that in there. Florencia's not, not, no, not for Florencia. Nope, never for Stefan. Roy, nope, no chip. No way, only an outer guard, nope. Seems like the we're with the non-chip people. Tic Tac writes in here, 1.3 gigaflops, please. All right. Well, we're well short of the 500 likes needed for the threshold, but hold on, 450 lumens, boom. But it's it's time to try uh, some Oreo crispy cherry blossoms uh, sandwiches for dessert. I do like these here. I was thinking I might send these for, these are isokoban. These are like rice. Hold on, I need the 400, 450 lumens. Okay, these are um, like uh, rice crackers with a little bit of soy taste or sesame, seaweed, and some spicy ones. I'm, I was thinking of sending these to our daimyo supporters as well. Uh, these are really good. Let's try 
inside this uh, ISO cover. I get these. I get these in um, uh, Wayno. They go great with beer. There's something inside, hold on. Oh! Check it out. There's a peanut in there. They put a peanut inside, that's pretty cool. Mm. They're not, they're salty, but they're not too salty. And there's a little bit of a sweetness to it. Are they gluten free? You know, I, I don't know. It, for beer snacks, men usually don't ask that. I don't know. Like, are they gluten free? Just say no. So when they take the gluten out of the out of the gluten free food, what do they do with that gluten? I, I've always been wondering about that. Where does the gluten go? You know? Um, I prefer, I prefer, um, you know, okay. I used to like Keating and then uh, that Keating phase ended and then I, I liked Asahi, then I liked Sapporo. And they had the Sapporo Red Star which is a little bit bitter and it's a deeper taste. And then I went back to uh, Asahi. And then I started doing craft beers for a while. And now I'm back on Asahi or Ebisu. I find that um, if I just want a refreshing cold drink, then the craft beer is a little bit too heavy and it's too much for me. I mean, I like it, but sometimes you don't need, you don't need all that fancy stuff, you know? And it's kind of expensive. When I came to Japan, all right, and I don't want to talk about um, drinks too much, but um, I was blown away by the quality of, of uh, the beer here. Because all I had through, through college was like natural light. We called it Natty Light. Um, and Beast, which is from Wisconsin. It's Beast is called Wisconsin's Best, I think. I don't know why they call it Beast. Get you can get twenty four cans at Walmart for six dollars and thirty three cents. I know that. That was in nineteen ninety six. Schlatz, Schlatz, Schmatch was another one that we drank a lot, and they weren't very good. I gotta be honest with you, wasn't really impressed. Then when I got to, the, to Japan in nineteen ninety eight, I was like, whoa, what's the deal with this? This is so good, a little expensive, but really good. So. You know, I, I, I always remember those days when I first came, and um, I was always impressed with, with uh, the offerings. And I couldn't tell really too much the difference between the three. And even today, if you did a, a blind test, I don't know if, you know, I'd probably be able to tell the difference. Yeah. Sapporo has always been a little bit more bitter, and Kirin has like some sort of X factor, and Asahi, Pretty much is like a neutral in between, just like the good old natural, the, the good old go to. You can't go wrong. The other ones have a little bit more character to it. Uh, I gotta give this um, curry cheese ramen five stars. And if Kanai were here, she'd give it, she'd give it, she'd say that these go to 11, Spinal Tap reference, or like five stars out of four, I think she would say. Five out of four. Luckily, I have uh, three other ones, and I have a case of them coming for the daimyo, so um, there's 30, 30 cheese ramens inbound. It's going to be really, really nice. Um, all right, let's try this here. For the dessert, Oreos, 450 lumens. Okay. 
Oh, there we go. Uh, chip on cookies. Oh, it's a package in a package. This is too bright. Let's go 300 lumens. There we go, 300 lumens. Package in a package. Smells like flowers. Ah, oh. see, this is hard. All right, all right. I'm. I, I gotta. Sh I gotta sh show this to you. All right. Hold on. Three hundred lumens. Okay. See this? Here's the Oreo, and it's so thin, isn't it? That's a ripoff, man. They gotta have a double or a triple. This is not even a single. It's so thin and the cookie's too small. But I think if they made the bigger cookies, oh there you can see the pink in there. I think if they made the, the thicker cookies, then the cookie would overpower the taste. But these are too thin, that's like a ripoff, man. I gotta twist it. I, I, who, do, who does that? Who, who, who does that? Wait for it. Okay, safe. I have 300 lumens. No, it's too bright, okay. 150 lumens. So you can see it's a little, it's pinkish. Uh, is that like little bits of cherry blossom in there? Do you see that? That's pretty interesting. Hold on a second. 300 lumens. All right, look at this. I guess you, can you see chunks of cherry blossoms in there? Maybe there's like little pieces of it. Yeah, there's like a little spattle, a spatzel of cherry blossom. It smells like jasmine tea. It doesn't, doesn't really have a smell of cherry blossoms. It's more like a jasmine. These might be good with coffee, Mr. Ralph Rosa. I, I think these might be good with coffee. Okay, hold on. It's all right. It's tooth, tooth scrapings. Oh no. The cookie's so thin. There's a slight floral taste. Artificial is the right word. Mr. Tabonski. The Tabonski. It is kind of an artificial, but it's not bad. I think it's, it's an interesting taste it's, and something new, and you might like them. By the way, this was in the daimyo box that was sent uh, uh, at the beginning of the month, so these are on the way. I hope you like them better than I did. They don't go well with beer, though. Maybe they do. Let's let's experiment. Neutral. The bitterness of the beer balances quite well with the sweetness of the chocolate. Salty. Actually, 
I didn't really dip it in there. <laughs> I didn't really dip it in there. There's some people panicking out there. Don't worry, I didn't really. It's it the, the curry's really deep down there. I I need to really get in there and get the like fist it in there. Um, the headlamp is because it's dark in here. All right, and I have to make sure I know where I'm stepping. I don't want to step on something or or trip. So you uh, practice safety. This is a Petzl. And if you know anything about headlamps, this is like the Rolls Royce of headlamps. This is a, um, look at this. I can tilt it down. Check this out. 450 lumens. Do you even know how much that is? Whoever asked that question, do you even know how much 450 lumens is? That's like a massive amount. It's like looking into the sun. Look. Do you see? It's like looking into the sun. If I go at night into the forests of, like, um, Japan, out in the Alps and stuff, like, I can just wear this. Deer will freeze. They won't even know. Like, headlights. It looks like headlights. It's really, really bright. When you go camping, you need, you need headgear. Yeah, um, this view, this campfire has gotten a couple more million views since it's been in all the videos. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's because I've been doing this in my living room, but I think it might be just because a lot of people are um, camping in their living rooms these days. Um, I'll take some of your questions here before we end this. Hey, Neko's here. Thank you, Mr. Pearman. Thank you, Neko. You're very welcome. Welcome to welcome to the uh, camp here. Now this is the last day for indoor camping. Um, the tent is going to be uh, being put away and it'll be used in real camping situations out in the great outdoors. But it was nice to get the um, uh, dust off of it and, and use it over the last couple of months. I first pulled this tent out in in April, I believe. So it's, been, it's nice to have a tent. Um, ooh, Asahi. Um, in New Zealand, uh, it's winter now, and pissing down with rain. Uh, Kylie, I had to teach Kanai the differences between um, UK and Australian and American English. She's very confused by the word um, piss and pissed. I'm pissed off, and I'm uh, taking the piss and um, just get pissed. Like, it, it's very different. So she's very confused by the English um, from those words. I don't know how to explain it, but I told her some stuff. Um, I told I told her um, in the restroom uh, the difference between number one and number two. And I always ask because I just want to know how long I have, like how long I'm going to be waiting. So you always ask, right? Everybody asks, number one or number two, so then you know how long you have to wait. And, uh, you know, some other slang. But it was funny, though, because I taught some of the slang, and I used it as though it was normal English. Like, we use it every day. And then she would incorporate that in her um, everyday language, and it was cute. I did, and then somebody corrected her. And then there's some uh, anger, and then eventually dissipated. But we still use that because it's more fun. <laughs> it's true. It's, just, uh, it's true. It's actually it's a true story. Um, all right, I can take you into the tent a little bit. All right, let's go into the tent. Shh, keep it down. Keep it down. All right, be careful. We don't want to spill the beer. Remember last time? Do you remember last time? We lost one. That was really hard. Last time we spilled uh, a beer, and when I came back, Okapi was Okapi was down. All right, somehow he got in the tent. He was he toppled over into the puddle. I, I don't remember. I think I, that's how I remember it. But um, it was quite it was quite an experience. Um, it's it is nice to have a tent. Uh, if you don't, if you do have kids, um, camping is is amazing uh, in your living room. 
but you need to have the sounds, the sound effects in the background, and it is pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna be getting getting rid of this quarantine hair, probably just a trim on the top. I don't think I'm gonna go like just shave it all off because the barber shops will actually be opening soon, anyways. So kind of I think she's gonna do it off the sides, and this mullet has to go. The mullet's like down to here now. Yeah. Or, or I can just shave the sides and leave the mullet. I was thinking of doing that. I haven't had a mullet in a very long time. Um, I think in the 1980s, mullets were pretty popular. My brother used to have a tail. Do you remember tails? Like he, like break dancers would have a little tail. And I think it went down, went all the way down to the spine of, back to the spine, he had a tail. It was just a little teeny thing. It's not, that's not a mullet, but uh, I, I don't know call it was, a rat tail, maybe? That's it, yeah. It was a rat tail. Those are really in style in the um, the mid, like early to mid 80s. Remember Roxanne, Roxanne? Like there's there's some really weird breakdance music before breakdancing was really popular. I wanna be your man. And then like, I don't know, there's people trying to do head spins. Kids are walking around with, with cardboard. You know, and they go, oh man, I got you got cardboard? No, I don't got cardboard, you got cardboard. Let's go with some cardboard. Everyone had cardboard right, in the 1980s, and you'd carry it with you. And he had a tail, and um, you know, stuff, you, I don't know if it was in style. I kind of looked the same. I didn't really have any style. It was neutral. So it was a pretty neutral style. Not very popular. I had my friends though, a few friends. Uh, break dancing, good times. So I remember the last time I did break dancing, I was in Prague in 1998. A couple of friends of mine, um, Eric, I I'll introduce you to Eric. Well, I'm sure he's gonna come. He's 200, and, I think he's 210 centimeters tall uh, from Holland and Krishpan. He's, they're from Almira and Jordi, uh, three Dutch friends that I made in, in Prague. And I was drinking in a, in a pub in Prague in 1998 and uh, Oh, oh, I'd met them on the train from Vienna to Prague in 1998. They were doing interrail and I was doing Eurorail. And we became friends and I said, where are you guys staying? And he goes, oh, we know this place. It's a dollar a night at the, at the university in Prague. It was near this, the main science museum in, in Prague. So we spent the night there in a room with 50 air mattresses. It was a dollar a night. And we went out and we, we um, went out to a club on the, on the main square, uh, main, um, I don't even what you call it. Was it was not a square, but uh, near the science museum, there's a big plaza. Uh, there's lots of uh, clubs on the sides of there. And I got really, really, look, Czech beer is really strong, all right? It's like really strong. Uh, compared to American beer, it's like 3.8% or something. Czech beer is like 8%, all right? Pilsner, the, uh, the original uh, um, Budweiser, Budvar. So we were drinking that stuff and I was gone. And then I started break dancing. I did the worm and I was doing, you ever do the worm? So I was doing the worm and they were, they were loving it. And then my friend, Eric, I think he, the 210 centimeter dude, he tried to do the worm too. It, it looked really funny cause he was just so big. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got sick and uh, I hurled uh, behind the stage. I, it was, it was like, a, like a theater turned into a club or something. Oh, and then some dude, um, he got in a political argument with me. He was um, German, I believe. And he was talking, he was talking stuff, right? Like, I don't know, we're not to, and then he wanted to get, a, he, he said, um, like I was, uh, something about my clothes, like I was wearing Nikes and Levi's and making fun of me or something. And so, um, like, I don't wanna fight this guy. And then behind me comes Eric, this 210 centimeter, which is like six foot eight. He comes from behind me and he goes, and he, he like, <laughs> he like gets all inflated and he goes, um, what's going on here? And the dude went away. And I don't, I don't know if Eric could actually fight. He just looks really big. But that's all it took that night. That guy was really not nice. He was bullied a lot. Cheers. Mm. Some good times backpacking around Europe. Yeah, first trip was in uh, 96 and then 97. 
went back after in the summers. I'd save up all my money um, working uh, in a in the uh, warehouse. It's twelve bucks an hour if you worked uh, overtime. So I would always try to get the overtime. Long days. Eight twenty-seven was the warehouse rate. It's eight twenty-seven an hour. And if you worked overtime, you got uh, twelve dollars. And if you came in on the weekends, you got double time. So sixteen bucks an hour. That was the hardest job I ever did, working in a warehouse in college to save up money. Um, I thought you stayed at the K7 Relax in Prague. Um, I don't know what that is. I don't even think this place had a name. It was just a university like room that was turned into air mattress paradise for a dollar. And then after Prague, I went back down to Vienna and then I went on to, um, <clears throat> to Budapest. And, uh, oh, did I? I was in 97. And when I was on the train from um, Vienna to Budapest, everyone tries to recruit you to go into youth hostels. Um, this is before the movie Hostel, by the way. Just put that out there. If I'd seen the movie Hostel, I probably would not have gotten on those trains going towards Eastern Europe uh, back in 96 and 97 and 98. Seriously, that movie is really creepy scary. And I went to Bratislava, Bratislava and um, and to um, Budapest and all those places, to Romania. And if I'd seen that movie Hostel, and I was by myself, by the way, all right? I didn't try to be hero. I didn't go out and do stuff. I went out there for more for the historical, cultural stuff. I wasn't really caring about going out, you know, discotheques and things like that. But if you'd watch that movie Hostel, you're not gonna wanna go um, to those places as a backpacker anymore. Don't watch it. And don't watch part two either. I watched that after I did, after I, I shouldn't, you know, I, I said I won't watch part one and I watched part one and I watched part two. Part two was really scary. And if there was a part three, I think I watched that too. Uh, that was really bad. I don't know how many hostels there are out there, but it's really scary. Um, Stefan Colin writes in here, do you know someone foreigner who was working in construction? No. Wait, Kevin Riley. Kevin Riley, um, he's not working in construction now, but he worked in construction 20 years ago when he first came to Japan. And construction pays pretty good, but his trade is carpentry. He's a darn good carpenter. He can make stuff with his hands, man. He's not just a chef, he's, he's, he's a really good carpenter. So um, if you have questions about carpent, um, construction work in Japan, ask Kevin. He even had like the baggy pants, I think, and stuff. He knows all about that. Um, and he learned, he learned all his Japanese, I think, working on the construction sites in Osaka. That's why his Osaka dialect is, is spot on. Like, if you just hear his voice, it's hard to tell that he's a foreigner, just because his, his Kansai dialect is pretty darn good. Um, he, made, he made some pretty good money in construction, I know that, and Japanese workers do, do pretty good. Um, construction is really hard work, though. A lot of respect for those that are building, um, working in a team to do that. I can't do that. I gotta work by myself. I gotta get out of the tent. This is the tent of nostalgia. All right, let's get out of the tent of nostalgia. All right. If you guys want to see a picture of Eric, it's on my Instagram. He's um, he's the tallest person I've ever met. Like that was a friend of mine, and I've met some um, I've met some really tall people, but Eric. He's like super tall, man. Um, he's into robotics too. Let me see if I can find his picture. Uh, he came to visit Japan. I hadn't seen him in, I hadn't seen him in like um, tw 12 years. No, no, I hadn't seen him in like 15 years. And he came to Japan to visit. And uh, it's like nothing had, we'd both grown up, but it was like nothing had changed at the same time. That was so, that was so awesome. Yeah. The friends that I made when, we, when I was backpacking are, are some of the best friends. Um, this is before social media, so it, it, it's not like we could keep in touch, right? Um, once Facebook came, I think a lot of us all kind of reconnected, right? Um, you, met, you met up with your high school friends, you met up with uh, friends from traveling, um, all in the past. Here it is. You're gonna like this picture. You're gonna like this picture. All right, I gotta turn down the comment. All right, 
you all know Kaminari Mon in Ascusa, right? You you can walk underneath Kaminari Mon's uh, the big chochin or the big lantern, right? I want to show you the picture of my friend Eric here. All right, this is the this is the chochin, right? In uh, hold on, yeah, there's the chochin. That's Eric. That's how tall he is. He could put his head through the chochin. Look at that. That's massive, right? Who does that? Look at his head. This was, <laughs> this was taken, oh, I uploaded this later. I uploaded this one. He's 210 centimeters tall. Thundergate, isn't that awesome? Look at that. I love that photo. <laughs> yeah, those are my, for, for my Dutch friends, that, those are my friends from Almera. That's why I, I've been to Almera so many times. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, he can play basketball, but now he's, a, he's into robotics. Go figure. Um, oh, thanks, UFO Bob put in the Instagram. So you go over there, check it out. That's, it's, that was a couple of years ago, but um, yeah, I, I put in some nostalgic photos from the traveling, and it's pretty cool. Uh, um, to relive that. I have some um, photo albums. Actually, I showed you uh, two years ago my 20, my Japan 20th anniversary. And uh, that video has like 250,000 views. It's a live stream. That's insane. And if you want to take a look at some of the old photos, you can take a look at that video on Only in Japan Go. That was about two and a half years ago. Yeah. Where I, 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 I just talked about what it was like when I was in Japan and, and how 20 years has gone by so quick. Now it's been 23 years. It's crazy. That's crazy in itself. Um, why don't you guys write in, where are you, where's everybody watching from? Anybody watching from uh, Japan? Anybody from, from Canada? Anyone from Africa? Anyone from um, the planets out there in the galaxy far, far away? Portugal, America, how cool is this, England? Singapore, UK, Maui, Czech Republic. Oh, awesome. Jersey, USA. Very cool. Malaysia, Minneapolis. Stay, stay safe in, in uh, Minnesota. We're, we're following that. Uh, India, San Francisco, Toronto, New Zealand, California. Tupelo, Mississippi. How cool is that? Awesome. Pennsylvania. I used to drive across the Pennsylvania Turnpike to get to Ohio State University uh, from New Jersey. Indonesia, wow, we got a lot. Adelaide, great wine in Adelaide. Canada, Texas, Maui, wow. The Hawaiians are representing. Virginia Beach, how cool. I sent some postcards to Virginia Peace. International Space Station, no, you are not. Seriously? Whoa. Columbus, Georgia, Texas, Philippines, Hokkaido. Saboro, Sonoma, whoa, it's pretty international. Perth, how oh, oh, cool, it's winter down there. Down under, Western Australia, Saudi Arabia, awesome. Malaysia, wow, thanks guys, that's great. We have a pretty good audience um, all around the world and that makes me really happy. Um, uh, tomorrow's gonna be June, so I'll probably do another live stream. I like to do a live stream on the first day of June. If the movie theaters were open, Kanai and I would go to the movies because the cinemas are, are not open yet. But on the first day, this is something you can take in your notes, the first day of every month, the movie theaters are only $10, a 1,000 yen. So when I was, um, 20 years ago when I came, I only went to the movie theaters on uh, the first day of the month because the regular tickets for the movie theaters, the cinemas, was 1,800 yen, like $18. I remember when I came here, I was like, what? You gotta be joking. Nobody goes to the movies for that price. And uh, they actually do. And now with uh, IMAX, it's like $25 for a ticket now. And if you have 3D glasses, they can jack jack it up to $30 for a movie ticket. So um, I don't I don't go to the movies anymore, and that's why Kanai and I bought the um, OLED. When the price on this dropped down, like massively crazy, dropped. Um, then we bought a, a big screen TV on a very, very small TV stand, which we should probably not do. Don't, don't follow my lead. Whatever I tell you, don't listen. 
just do the opposite. People do that anyways, all right? I know if I say something, people just do it anyways. If I say don't do it, people do it. Remember I said don't, don't come down, don't come and try to find me. And then like people were like finding me and asking me for cards and stuff. Nobody follows the rules. They do the opposite of what you say. Does anybody want these? I can send it to you, maybe. I don't know. I don't think Kanai's gonna eat them. There's one more, one more pack in here. All right, let me sum up. Good. Good. Thanks so much for watching. I want you all to stay really safe, take care of each other. Um, yeah, the worst is is, uh, is 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 behind us in Japan for now. We'll see how, how things go, but stay, don't get complacent. Stay strong, everybody, just be careful. Uh, keep your vitamins up to get your D3, get some sunshine and stay mentally well, everybody, because I know it's really tough going. Um, just And just be really relaxed, be patient with people and try to stay away from them is the best thing I can say. Just try to stay away from people. Um, and take a look at the um, Akihabara live streams. By the way, they were cut in half because the YouTube app crashed. I guess it might have been something with the Wi-Fi or, or, or the 4G or the app or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow uh, morning. Get some shut-eye. Kanai is uh, already fast asleep. She's got to wake up at 7 in the morning as well. Um, it's just about 1 o'clock here. Happy June, everybody. Bye-bye.